All right, uh, we saw in class how to actually draw glucose. We showed you the full structure and the uh, shortcuts of that. And so now there's a bunch of other uh, simple sugars or single sugars that we want to uh, we want to learn. I want you to learn, actually. All right, uh, notice that these guys are called monosaccharides. Mono meaning one, and then, of course, saccharide meaning uh, sugar. So these are single sugars. And you're going to see that they, they gonna, they're going to have single rings, which is why I call them single sugars. All right, so let's review briefly the rules for, for drawing these, uh, especially the shortcut rules. First of all, you don't have to put all the carbons in. Uh, you can simply, any intersection uh, is understood to be a carbon. Um, any other atom has to be noted, but not carbons. Also, it, the quick way to draw hydrogens is just to just leave lines hanging in space. So any line that's sticking out of a molecule, we all assume is going to be a, a hydrogen. All right, so uh, let's review briefly glucose here. You can see we've got the alpha and beta forms of glucose. The difference is here. And um, we see the difference here is that in alpha, we have this hydroxyl in the number one carbon in the down position. And in beta, we have this hydroxyl in the up position. And the rest of the structure, as you know, is, if you recall, is uh, with some Beethoven down, down, up, down. So that's how you remember uh, to put the hydroxyls in the down position, down on number two, up on number three, down on number four. Uh, number six, again, doesn't really matter. There's free rotation between these, the number five carbon and the number six carbon. That's a single covalent bond. So this hydroxyl really can be on any of these three positions. Uh, what we generally do is put it right there, though, because it's, um, it's, it's just convenient for drawing. Okay, so once again, there's your, there's your glucose. Now, the next monosaccharide we'll look at here is galactose, which is also C6H12O6. And to do that, all I have to do is come in here and uh, change the name from glucose to galactose. Poof! No, I'm just kidding. Sorry, that was really that was really poor. Uh, all we have to do is take this hydroxyl on the number four carbon here and move it up here to the up position. So alpha galactose, instead of being down, down, up, down, which would be after alpha glucose, is actually down, down, up, up. Same thing over here for beta. Uh, to make beta glucose, uh, galactose, sorry, we simply take the hydroxyl and put it in the up position. Again, on the number one carbon is the only place that we go from alpha to, uh, to beta. All right, so there's alpha and beta galactose. Glucose and galactose are both what we call hexo sugars because they have uh, six atom rings. They're hexagon shaped, and that's pretty obvious here. You can see that. Uh, there's also another type of sugar. Actually, there's lots of types of sugars, but one of the ones we're going to look at right now are the pentose sugars, and these guys have a five-membered ring, which is, uh, which is pentagon shaped. So here's, here's uh, the first one. This is fructose. Once again, you'll notice here that uh, it's C6H12O6, which makes it yet again an isomer of glucose. But you'll notice that instead of having six members in the ring, we only have five. Um, you'll also notice that there's four carbons, one, two, three, four in the ring, with again our oxygen. And then uh, the number one carbon hangs off the ring, as, do the, as does the number six carbon. And again, you have this rotation, so technically on the number six carbon and the number one carbon, the hydroxyl could be here or here, or here. All right. So fructose is actually uh, is uh, actually quite simple to draw. You draw your pentagon. You have your number one carbon hanging off your number six. Uh, but to figure out the middle three here on two, three, and four, all you need is a diagonal like this. And if you'll notice, if I do a diagonal straight across the molecule, uh, it shows me the location of the hydroxyls. So the number two hydroxyl is up, number three hydroxyl is up, and the number four hydroxyl is down. And because um, this hydroxyl can be anywhere, uh, it's not actually in the ring, uh, there is no such thing as an alpha fructose or a beta fructose. It's just fructose. All right, uh, the next pentose sugar we're going to look at here is ribose. This is a, an important sugar. It's going to be found in the structure of RNA. And uh, this time it's not an isomer of glucose, but it's C5H10O5. And you notice we've got carbon 1, 2, 3, Four, five, and let me remind you: is as long as we draw these in the orientation, uh, the same orientation over every time, the numbering does proceed uh, from right, then clockwise to left. All right. So, if we look at this alpha ribose, you'll notice it's alpha because the uh, the hydroxyl here is in the the down position. Uh, there's a hydroxyl number two in the down position, hydroxyl number three in the down position, and of course, number five, which is up here, we can have the hydroxyl in any place. And so this would be alpha ribose. We can make this um, alpha I'm sorry, beta ribose by simply, let's see, I'm trying to figure out how to run the controls here, okay? Well, I'm just take this, I'm going to clone it and drag it over here. Now I'm going to make this a beta structure, and I do that simply by taking this hydroxyl and putting it up there. 
So really, ribose is real simple. All the hydroxyls are down, except for, of course, one number five. So here's alpha ribose and beta ribose. Another uh, pinto sugar that you're going to see uh, a lot in class is not ribose, but deoxyribose. Deoxyribose is in DNA. And of course, as the name would tell you, it's deoxygenated. We're missing, we're missing an oxygen. So this is actually the structure of a ribose down here. Looks identical to alpha ribose, except I'm going to get rid of this oxygen. Take that guy away, deoxygenate it. And so we're going to be left with, in, in the number two position, we're going to be left with a hydrogen there instead of a, uh, instead of a hydroxyl. So the formula, instead of being C5H10O5, we actually have C5H10O4. All right. So once again, let me come in here and uh, clone this and um, pull it over here so you can look at it. Now we're going to take the alpha deoxyribose and we're going to make it beta by simply raising the hydroxyl here on top of the number one carbon. Okay, so there's your uh, there's deoxyribose. Um, want to remind you uh, that after you've looked at all these monosaccharides, they do have a lot in common which helps you recognize them very, very easily. The first thing is they often have the word ose in the name. And as you say, glucose, fructose, ribose, deoxyribose, uh, they all have O's, so the O's ending will tell you that it's a carb. Uh, that's not always true. You're going to find out that it's not always true. Um, they also, you're going to see that in carbohydrates, you're going to find a carbonaceous ring, which only has one oxygen member in it. And then, of course, don't forget this uh, right here where you have uh, a carbon uh, that's essentially associated with a water molecule. So uh, those are your monosaccharides, so uh, you're going to have to learn them. So good luck.